Yeah. Okay, four o'clock. We're going to call the Mass Facilities Oversight Oversight Committee meeting to order. Uh, first thing we got to do for business on the agenda is approve the minutes from May fourth, twenty twenty Mass Facilities Oversight Committee meeting. Do I have a motion to approve those minutes? I've got an edit. I've got an edit to the, the minutes that the word. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Do we have a second? Also, you know, I, oh, I, need to, I need to, I need to give the edit. Well, we'll can we correct them after that. Yeah, we'll correct them. We need a first and a motion and a second, and then we'll correct them. No, uh, no, no. no, we usually correct it first, and then we'll motion the correction, and then second the motion to correct. Okay. We'll go with that. So, what's your correction be on there? Uh, the, the the spelling of of the word capital. Should be spelt with an A, not an O. I'm not. Is where are we talking at, Lindsay? On there. Well, what? I gotta see if I can. Uh, uh, this is covering up my entire. Let's see here. I'll exit the full screen so that I can get to my uh, uh, email. And let me find it here. Yep. Okay. Sorry, guys. Okay, so it's, under the, it's under the financial report. It's the second bullet point. The very second to last line is the, that the district can support the bond payments in addition to the capital improvement projects. And that should be capital with an A, not an O. Do you see it? Uh, page one, or what, which page are we talking? It's under the financial report, Dave Nicholson. Right. Page two. Page two. Hello? Hey, Lindsay, which button, which bullet is it? to the last word on the second bullet. Got it now, my bad. I okay. see it now. Okay. Yeah, it's spelled yep. C-A-P-I-P-O-L instead of A-L. Is Tracy on? She's not. I'll, I'll get her to amend them tomorrow, no problem. Perfect. Is there any other, uh, anything else that needs to be corrected or amended on here? So we got, a, so I need a motion then to approve the minutes. I'll motion to approve the agenda, the um, edited minutes. I'll second. Okay, we got a motion to second to approve the edited minutes. Uh, any any other conversation or questions on that? All those in favor, say aye. 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 All uh, those against, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, Next on the agenda, financial report. Did you were, were you saying Dave's not here? I'm here now. Okay, Dave, you got the floor. All right. I'm gonna try to share my screen. Hey, everybody, see my screen? No. Yes? No. Now we can see you. <clears throat> Dave, you seem to be on two computers. Are you trying to go for the other one? I'm. Let's 
that's interesting. I see I'm up here. Well, there's no video. Yeah, maybe you put the video back up. I can't. How did I get rid of the other one? Am I kidding? Um, I can get rid of it, yes, I think. There, Dave, is this what you're looking for? Yes. If you can scroll down to the, <laughs> there you go, say, there you go. I'll, I'll ask you, Van, to move things down. <laughs> All right. So if we look here, we have uh, revenue of 16.1 million, expenses of 20 million, and save right now. And with an balance of 35 million. And if you look at, um, FY19, revenue exceeded expenses uh, by you know, $33 million. A lot of that had to do with the $25 million worth of, uh, of bio, uh, state bonds that we issued. Okay. So uh, a lot of that will go down as soon as we, um, uh, with construction of Coolidge, new Coolidge, on the new album, on the Coolidge side, I should say. Uh, uh, current here, we're sitting here down below. Uh, we, you can see where we're at in, in um, miscellaneous income. Uh, we have brought in $22,000 more than what we had budgeted for miscellaneous income. That's good. And in our investment income, it looks like we're probably going to fall short based on what we estimated because of all the uh, changes in, in the COVID has done to our investment rates right now. Hey, Dave. Uh, Dave, yeah. do you have like a phone on? It's, I'm getting some feedback. I do not have a phone on. Okay. Hey, Dave, you need to um, you need to turn down one of your um, computers. So I don't have two computers open. Um, I don't know how to shut down. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna. Okay. I'm gonna get rid of one of you. No. Okay, Dave, you still should be there, hopefully. Dave, are you still there? Yeah. Okay, continue. All right. Uh, now I bet we lost your screen. What's that? I can see. Yep, I'm sure the screen, so we should be good. Yeah, we're good. All right. Okay, John, if you want to go down further, uh, stay right there in this page. Um, in 1920, this is all everything that we have um, budgeted in for save. One thing I wanted to make sure, uh, clear here on the Coolidge new ele elementary school line here, you can see we have budgeted 4.9 million, but we have spent 20 shows as we have spent 22.6 million. That is not truly the case. What you're seeing here is the 22.6 million contains the purchase order that was entered in for the new construction. This is all encumbrance. A lot of this is encumbered. The overall budget for the program is uh, 25, a little over $25 million here that is what we had listed here for overall budget. Uh, this is showing up as an encumbrance because we asked, uh, uh, we wanted to look at everything what has been encumbered this year, but in fact, most of these expenses will occur next year. I wanted to point that out. If you saw that, that's going to throw things off a little bit um, because uh, when we ran the reports, we did it as with included encumbrances. Um, so when we get to the final one for the final uh, fiscal year, it will actually uh, we'll run this for a final one where we can actually see a lot of the expenses that you saw on the other slides will be true expenses, not encumbrances. This one actually contains encumbrances on this report. Um, anybody have any questions on this? Because I'm not going to go through the rest of the pages on save. If, uh, if not, we'll go on down to Pebble. In Pepple here, uh, we have, as of April 30th, we have spent um, uh, $10.126 uh, in uh, 
expenditures and had revenue of just 9.7 million. And, and if we look at FY19 and beyond, you can see our balances have increased, you know, from, uh, um, to, uh, uh, from uh, 6.1 million to 7.1 million. And so we would expect our expenditures to start in, uh, uh, increasing in excess of our revenue. And that's what's happened this year. Our investment income right now, for what we have in Pepple, we actually are uh, uh, a little ahead than what we end up budgeting for Pepple. So we were good there. Um, and our uh, property taxes right now, we are about 94% of our property tax collections. This has me just a little concerned. This is the end of April. Uh, hopefully we will... Um, if this is if, if this is a COVID impact, I don't know, but hopefully we will get this additional five hundred ninety four thousand dollars in property taxes. Okay, next page, John. Here, uh, these are all of our uh, activities as of May twenty first. All the uh, expenses and encumbrances for all of different uh, um, uh, projects. Um, that we have here. And this is all sorted by projects, all active projects here. So everything you see on the first few pages, you can see what our budgets were and our notes talking about what original budget was and, and the inflationary impact of those budgets where we added those notes on that. And we'll continue to, uh, to do that as we move forward. But then in the following year, we will, um, when we actually set our initial budget, we will be using the inflationary budget amounts moving forward. Next page. I think you might be able to go all the way through, all the way through the bottom of this, because then you're going to have in total what we have spent budgeted 23.5 million, and we have spent 26.1 million. And if you recall, a lot of our um, overages could be due to not um, using inflationary budget amounts that we've had that we're going to be start doing. So hopefully, um, as year goes on, years go on, our budgets and our actuals will match up a little bit better than they have. Yeah, and Dave, I think the other thing is there's some budgets that haven't hit this um, because they're a 2021 budget, and I believe this is just through fiscal 1920. Oh, correct. As well. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Thanks, John. All right, let's go to the next page. This is talking about save uh, save dollars projections. Um. Hey, sorry. Here, um, what we have here at the top, we're talking about bond, say bonds that were issued. We have Coolidge. Uh, we issued twenty five point one eight five million. The yield for Coolidge was two point three three percent. We are intending to issue twenty five point seven hundred uh, point seven five million for uh, the new elementary at Jackson. We don't know what the yield is going to be at this point in time, but we know we need to make sure that we have a coverage level of 1.2. That means for every dollar that we have committed for save expenditures, there needs to be a, uh, we need to have revenues or revenues coming in that year that ex, uh, are at least 20% uh, higher. That's where the 1.2 comes in. If it's 20% higher, it would be 1.3. So that's the number that we're trying to make sure we're above at all times. So I've had some conversation with Tim Oswald with Piper Sandler and, and asking him his uh, professional opinion. Um, uh, how much can the revenue drop and make us still to be in an okay position with moving forward with our, um, our, our technology purchases that we want to use uh, out of save of 2.6 million for next year. And also, with um, Jackson, knowing that we're going to be issuing some bonds uh, for Jackson uh, Elementary. And um, he assures me if, um, and right now, they're projecting, which they don't know, that haven't getting raw, uh, data right now on save sales tax in, uh, uh, income is really hard to get. But everything that they're hearing, what they're seeing, at this point in time, they're looking at a, a anywhere from a three to five percent drop in sales tax revenue. If we receive a five percent drop in sales tax revenue, we will still be our coverage level will still be okay with the issuance of ja of the Jackson bonds that we have for Jackson. And um, we were thinking that 
at a 5%, we will be at a 1.25 coverage at a 5%. And that still is above 1.2. Uh, we will know a lot more information when the Department of Revenue submits their updated estimates, which comes, they come out in August. We'll know a lot more about how things are looking. Until that date comes, we're not going to, uh, this, this is all kind of guessing. But one good thing is we do have a, um, uh, if need, and which we will probably end up doing anyway at some point in time, but if the revenue drops by more than 5%, we have uh, $56 million save bonds outstanding right now that they are callable as we speak. That meaning that we can refinance them. And, um, and we were willing to do that if need be, because right now we're always looking at there's a, a to get as much cost savings as possible in doing that. And the the uh, as of right now, um, there isn't a huge windfall in refinancing it. Uh, but if if we needed to, we would still be able to have some savings. But we would actually increase our coverage level quite a bit by refinancing these bonds. And right now, um, our um, Center Point Urbana, they just issued, it's a small issuance, but just recently they issued uh, some bonds and it came in at 2.07%. When you compare that on the save, on $56 million save bonds that we have, they were issued at 2.3398%. So when you look at Coolidge compared to uh, what was done with the save uh, 56 million, there wasn't a lot of uh, savings there. It was like pretty much the same. <laughs> so there wasn't a lot of uh, that's why they're saying, ah, you know, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, we're seeing the numbers starting to drop the, uh, the uh, uh, yields uh, on the bonds. So there could be, you know, it could be a, a smart move for us just to refinance anyway, because if the bond rates drop more, we'll, it'll be to our advantage to refinance those bonds. The other piece of refinancing will allow us to do is that, uh, we have right now we have approximately at the end of this year we'll have approximately 41.4 million of those bonds left to, uh, in principle to pay off but we also there's a 44 million dollar reserve on these bonds that are that are out there as well we can use that reserve and buy those bonds down when we reissue them and so we would not have to uh, uh, issue 41.4 million in bonds we could do uh, 37 you know million uh, 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 bonds and be able to uh, 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 get the, which will actually free up some of our coverage level that we need. And so that is kind of like our back pocket. If we had to, we would reissue our bonds prior to issuance of Jackson bonds if we needed to, to increase our coverage level. But right now it doesn't appear that we need to if, if uh, the uh, revenue does not drop below 5%. Does anybody have any questions on this information? Yeah, this is Lindsay. Appreciate yeah. that. Appreciate that. Uh, uh, so, for, I've got a number of questions. First one is: uh, so, if we breach the loan covenant bond, if your bond covenants, uh, what uh, are the consequences of breaching it? Oh, uh, if the consequences of breaching it mean the coverage level, we the, don't maintain the, it. The, the, that no, it's not that you don't make payment, but you have you have covenants that you were just talking about, including coverage tests. So, what are the consequences of a breach of a covenant? If you don't, if you if you don't maintain that one point two, at least above, because our bonds that we do currently issue, we say we're going to uh, maintain a one point two coverage level throughout the entire of the bonds. If we don't meet that, um, that's a good question. I have not experienced that. Um, so, but if we actually refinance. The $56 million, that would actually drop us, that would pop us up to about one, almost a 1.6. The reason I'm asking is uh, that five basis point margin, I don't take any comfort in that, that you're talking about. I mean, you can blow through that in no time at all. So I'd request that you uh, ask bond counsel or ask Piper, so what happens to, if we breach the, the, the bond covenants, uh, the, the the next question uh, that I have is, can you tell us what our bond rating is for the bonds that have been issued? Yes. Um. Because sometimes when you reach covenants, you get a bond rating downgrade, which would be horrific. 
and then your your interest expense goes up. Right. This is a this is a really serious issue. Well, I, and that's, you know, well, at a one point two, uh, the the reason why our bond rating improved that's why we had a, a coverage level of one point two. Yeah, recently. but what I what I I didn't realize it was that we're working on this tight of margins. I mean, we were at uh, one point three six. If if we actually drop lower than 20 percent i mean if, if we actually drop uh, less than three percent or five percent that estimate will be above i mean closer to 1.3 i understand but, i understand the math i'm just telling you you don't have much as it relates to your bond covenant you don't have much of a margin for error with, with it being five basis points uh and so i i think we really need to know whether what happens to a breach of the covenants and does it impact our, our rating? And you can get back to us on that. Uh, two other questions would be that uh, if you call the bonds, is there a prepayment premium that we is charged to the to the district? It may be callable, but is there an economic cost? No, no. there is absolutely none on that. And then the, the the last comment I have on on your bonds would be: is there any ability? Given that we have, you know, extended the, uh, you know, the, the penny tax to extend the maturity to give you some uh, uh, a debt relief. That uh, I mean, I don't like the idea because you know that that just means there's going to be more interest expense. But I also don't want to uh, run a risk of us either not being able to fund really important projects for the district or having a bond covenant violation. Well, that's why uh, refinance the, uh, in, in the whole plan, the uh, master facility plan to do all the elementaries, uh, there's always a plan to refinance this $56 million. We would need to do that even um, if we were to move on to the following elementary school, This these bonds would have to be refinanced to be able to make sure that we can uh, to do that. And we're also looking at, uh, uh, you know, there's also factors in there of growth growth factors in there. There's also uh, factors on maintain our enrollment. And so if we refinance these bonds, which probably we, we probably will be, if, if I was to guess, because if the rates continue to drop, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be wise for us to refinance them anyway, even before if, you know, we would had to, if we needed the additional coverage to do so. And so we would probably be looking at refinancing them anyway. And so in doing so, that's going to increase our coverage a level quite a bit uh, to be able to, uh, um, we're going to be looking at about 1.5, back in the 1.5 range, when we, re 1.5, 1.6, if we were to refinance these, because we would and probably. Is, and is that because you're extending maturity? Correct. Yes. Okay. I get that then. Yeah. That, uh, uh, but what I would tell you is that you're at absolute historic lows. Uh, as it relates to interest rates. So don't be thinking that interest rates are going to go down much more because Chairman Powell of the Federal Reserve has indicated uh, he has no interest in going to uh, negative interest rates. It's not part of his policy like it is over in Europe. Yeah. So yeah. You're, you're at absolute historic lows uh, uh, across the yield curve on, that is priced off treasuries. So you, what you're seeing on, on rates that are going off in the market uh, but, you know, I, I do want you to uh, ask the question about the uh, bond covenant violations and what what's the what's the consequence of that, which could be as serious as a uh, a, uh, a, 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 a loss of your bond ratings uh, or that you would you would drop down in terms of credit quality, which right. would be absolutely catastrophic something that we don't want to have. Right, I mean, we, and it would be very hard for us to sell future bonds. So, yeah. So I think that I just my, again, we're in oversight here, but uh, I'm surprised that the margin is that tight. Uh, it makes, I'm just going on record saying I'm very uncomfortable that it's only five basis points uh, relative to your coverage ratio. Yeah, if, if the and numbers I do drop at that I level. I understand all the math that you've you've outlined, but I'm just telling you that that uh, uh, that I think that's a, a a very tight margin you're working on. And again, there are so many other things that can happen 
um, that could, could uh, as, as it relates to your revenue, and I realize how difficult it is to, that, to, to forecast that. That's why I was asking, and I'm glad you did the sensitivity analysis on it, but I just want to give you that counsel from oversight. To me, that's a really a, a very a concerning uh, a coverage ratio. And that you're not that far. You're not that far from uh, uh, violating covenants. Yeah, Lindsay, what's a, what's a uh, what would what's a number that would make you feel better? Because I don't I don't have a comment. Well, the the so the the way that you need to think about this, we're in really has in uh, uh, uncharted times as it relates to unemployment, uh, and uh, you know there's a direct link between. Uh, uh, actual consumption and sales tax that we're relying on and that uh, uh, I I got to tell you that uh, 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 you know where they're talking like at the at the 1.5 number that Dave's talking at the 1.5 number uh, given how, how uh, uh, uncertain We'll know a lot more in August, but uh, I'm just, you know, need to go on record that that, that I'm concerned, uh, and there could be. And now it could turn out that, that the the revenues there, the sales taxes are there, but uh, uh, I'm just trying to answer your question as best I can. To given that that uh, that this is the 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 covenants of the bond doesn't mean we have a payment default. Well, you breach your your, your covenants. That's a really bad thing, even though you you continue to pay in the bonds. So, I'm just giving you a, an opinion from shooting from the hip, given all of the variables of what we don't know today, uh, and maybe this will clean up uh, later this year. But uh, I just, uh, for, again, from oversight, need to share that that opinion. And again, this is my business. I know that's why I'm asking. It's like I, I, I appreciate that. That's, I was just I, I just don't have a good concept of that. So this is helpful for me. Is there any other question, Dave? Do you have anything else to add? Is there any other questions for Dave on this? So Dave will get back to us. Yep. No other questions. Okay, moving, uh, going back up to the top. Let me get back up to this one. Uh, John, you're up when it comes up. Give us the update on the new elementary. John, you're muted. Yep. I bet you can hear me better now. Um, Good. Sorry about that. Uh, Moving dirt here again today. Should hopefully have the building pad um, up and start footings on Wednesday. Um, Mother Nature just hasn't been real kind to us, real kind to us here the last two weeks, and we spent a lot of time watching dirt try to get dried out. So that kind of stinks, but not a whole lot anybody can do about that. And hopefully here for the next week, weather stays good and we can make up some time. Um, yeah, outside of that, not a whole lot to report. Um, yeah, I don't know if I think Chad's still on and Joe Tercy may be on, the two from the OPN team. I don't know if you guys have anything further to add. Uh, no, we're doing, like John said, we're just kind of waiting for weather to dry out the dirt. Um, we've got a lot of back uh, stage work going on as far as Smittles coming in and approving all that stuff. and working with the contractor to have all the materials uh, ready to go when they're, when they need them. But uh, as far as actual work on sites, that has uh, been delayed just a little bit, like John said. So not too exciting this time here a month from now, I think there'll be a lot more to, to report on. So, and I, I know Sue texts me and I appreciate that Sue, cause I'm not always very good with introductions. So we just heard from Chad, Schumacher, he's the construction administrator for the project for OPN. Um, and then I think Joe Tercy's on, and he would be, I don't know what his exact title is, lead architect maybe? Uh, project manager. 
project manager. There you go. So um, Joe's kind of done a lot of the the overseeing up to getting the drawings done and obviously is still heavily involved in the project, but Chad's my day-to-day contact now that construction has started. So welcome these two with open arms and I apologize for not officially introducing them <laughs> ahead of now, but Sue, thank you for pointing that out. I just didn't know if it, my brain was on COVID and I didn't, I didn't remember <laughs> an introduction, so thank you. Yes, I'm going to blame it on COVID because it's a lot easier <laughs> to introduce people when they're sitting around the table and not lost somewhere in my computer screen. <laughs> Any questions from the group? Like I said, nothing, nothing too exciting here as of yet, but you guys may have questions, I guess. That's all I have, Pat. Pat, you're on mute now, too. You're pulling a John. I'm going to so, get those bingo cards. That That's the conference bingo. <laughs> <laughs> How many times can we say you're on mute? <laughs> so future meeting schedule discussion, John. You're on that bullet point. Yep, future meeting. So let's take a look. First Monday in July is the 6th. That is the 4th of July weekend. Um, do we want to do it the 6th or do we want to push that one off to the 13th? Thumbs up, thumbs down. I can see most of the group, I think. Thumbs up to the 6th or thumbs down? It don't matter to me. I thumbs see down. Two, down. I see two <laughs> thumbs down. So how about the 13th? The 13th, good for everybody? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. No problem there. We'll respect that holiday weekend and and go to the thirteenth. That's not an issue. Um, sorry, sorry for the uh, massive well, guy behind the scenes guy. Um, I believe that's also a board meeting day. As long as your agenda stops before then, if maybe it's we're back in person as well. But um, just FYI. Yeah. Uh, do we want to move it up a little bit to three o'clock? Yeah, we can do that. If you continue like this, I mean, I'm, I mean, if you're wrapped up in 45, we would be fine as can be to bump it up before the board meeting. So just FYI, that's all. Thanks, Justin. Um, it doesn't matter to me. And I mean, we could, we could always just take a tour of the site at that time too. I don't know if people's availability at four o'clock to get out to Coolidge, if that's good, bad, indifferent. Well, it depends on where we're at and social distancing and everything, too. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think as long as we, I mean, we count on the weather to be good. That's the one factor we can't control. But if the weather's good, the site's plenty large for us to walk six feet apart and have a conversation. Yeah, I mean, it'll just be, a, you know, foundation and stuff like that. They should, they might. Ty, so wait 30 minutes, but it'll be different. So, yeah, exactly. Uh, so what's there's a consensus out there. Do we want to go to three o'clock or we want to keep it at the four o'clock? I would be, I would feel better with the three o'clock in case we have more questions. Lindsay's he's keeping everybody on their toes and I appreciate that. So, I mean, I would, I would prefer to go at three o'clock myself, John. Okay. And then if, if weather's good, do we want to meet out on site? How is that working? Everybody's schedule, or do we just stick with a Zoom meeting again? Do I gotta look, look at my calendar to if we're gonna go on site. Do you I think mean, there'll be that much more progress by then, John, for us really to take a look at? Um, you can probably see some concrete in the ground. Yeah. I would just skip, stick with the Zoom meeting for now until maybe we get a little into the fall or when the school season starts or school after school starts mm -hmm. again. Yep, that's fine. Okay. I think we better that that uh, I I don't think I'd have availability uh, that uh, that that early in the day. Would the Zoom meeting at three work for you though, Lindsay? Um, that's what I'm looking at right now. So you're you're saying the the thirteenth. Um. <sighs> Yeah, it 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 should work. It might be a little bit tight, but uh, I could I could do as early as three, but uh, but uh, four would be better. 
let's go. I tell you what, let's let's split the medium and let's go three thirty. That's what okay. I was just gonna say. Split the difference, and so if you send out the invite to everybody, John, for three thirty. Yep. Okay, we'll do. Uh, I don't have any any other comments or anything unless you guys got anything yourselves. I've got one. I've got one update that that I'd request, and I think it's probably for Dave. That uh, we talked last time about uh, uh, the computer rollout with the Chromebooks and how that might use capital, uh, and uh, uh, and that that we have that reinjection money. Uh, so, uh, uh, is there an update on what the school is doing relative to are they? giving consideration to uh, reallocating the reinjection money to Chromebooks? Right now, uh, and everything uh, in the uh, 1.25 estimate and whatnot, that's that's moving forward with uh, spending the uh, carryover funds from this year and the 2.6 million of next year. Um, at this point in time, making those payments not having to tap into the reinjection mill funds at this point in time. And so uh, we're, we're, we're planning on using money from the CARES Act for the uh, um, hotspots internet support, which is a, a roughly about $360,000. We're gonna use uh, CARES funds for that. But for the purchase of our technology, we believe that we can uh, fit that in with our budget and that was accounted for. And then uh, one last thing, and it kind of goes back to uh, the, the coverage ratio. Dave, could you uh, do an analysis and just tell us how many basis points the coverage moves up if the, the reinjection money isn't considered in terms? I realize that how the, the you wrote that that the, uh, what the the bond requirements are that if it's uh, 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 committed or reserved. Uh, uh, expenditures uh, that that counts against the, the the ratio, but if you could just do a, a quick analysis for us, and you can report back at the next meeting if that became unreserved money. Uh, okay. Then what does that? Because I just don't want to violate any. Oh, know, absolutely! I am one hundred percent with you. We got to uh, make sure that we're above that at all times in our whole plan, and uh, so, and uh, and I communicated to technology in the future if for some reason we felt like we needed to um, tap into some of the uh, cut back on some of the 2.6 million so that we can stay above we, we would have to do that in the future so okay but i think if you know i mean that that money has sat there for so long and if we just unreserved it uh, that uh, for that calculation to give right, you a little right. bit more of a margin. I'm doing yeah, everything yeah. that I can think of to give the school district all the flexibility that, that you need. Right. right. May I make one more suggestion? Um, is, is it possible to use, to borrow money from PEPL in order to keep the save in, in, a, in a better situation? We have... I, I, I forget the exact number, but it's a uh, year's worth of pebble set back for emergencies. And if that is a possibility, that could be used in that if in the situation. Uh, Dave, the, what we probably end up doing, uh, we I don't think you can't borrow necessarily uh, to increase your reserve. But one of the things that we could probably do, there are some projects that we were funding out of save. Uh, that we could possibly shift to Pebble uh, because they're kind of interchangeable for a lot of those things. And so if we had to, we could shift some of that over to Pebble to free up some commitments out of save, which would help that formula. I didn't have anything else. Anybody else on the call? Any other questions for, for these guys? Nope. Okay. Sounds like we're adjourned then, right? Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Thanks.